Did you know that a good clinician can tell if the patient is going to suffer brain herniation and death? Also, did you know that you can accurately tell if the intracranial pressure is high just by taking the vital signs? Yes, this is the story of Cushing reflex. Cushing reflex, not to be confused with Cushing syndrome or Cushing disease. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, making sense of medicine one step at a time. So Cushing reflex, also known as Cushing effect, Cushing phenomenon, vasopressor response, Cushing reaction, or Cushing law, is a triad of hypertension, bradycardia, and irregular breathing. Cushing reflex is a sign of increased intracranial pressure. First, let's focus on the triad. Cushing reflex, triad of hypertension, bradycardia, and irregular breathing. Especially systolic hypertension, so when the systolic blood pressure is increasing way more than the diastolic, the pulse pressure will go up. Bradycardia and irregular breathing. Irregular breathing almost to the point of apnea. So Cushing reflex is a response to increased intracranial pressure. It means that herniation or death is imminent. Of course, brain herniation, not disc herniation. When intracranial pressure increases, Cushing reflex occurs, herniation and death will follow. That's why it's an emergency. That's why Cushing reflex is crucial. When you see Cushing reflex, this means the patient is going to die. So, whenever you see a Cushing reflex as a physician, you should leave everything alone. Go to a separate room where nobody can see you. Start to cry and weep just for seconds because we don't have enough time. Then go back to the patient because this is an emergency. Of course, this is a joke. You should never leave the patient at that point because herniation and death will occur. Increasing intracranial pressure will lead to decreased cerebral blood flow, also known as decreased cerebral perfusion pressure. Cushing reflex means that the intracranial pressure increase is an acute process, not a chronic one. Why does cerebral blood flow decrease in cases of increased intracranial pressure? So let's see, here's your skull and here is a nice arteriole inside your brain. Fine. When intracranial pressure builds up, it will start pushing against the arteriole because this is cerebrospinal fluid pushing against your arteriole. Once this intracranial pressure exceed the mean systemic arterial blood pressure inside the arteriole, this arteriole will start to compress. This is so bad because now you will suffer decreased cerebral blood flow and cerebral ischemia. So whenever you see a patient with hypertension, bradycardia, irregular breathing, please suspect intracranial hypertension. There is a theory that in cases of organ transplant, if the patient develops the Cushing reflex, it means that the patient or the recipient is rejecting the organ due to ischemia to the posterior fossa. It's a theory. Now let's turn our attention to the mechanism of Cushing reflex, which is quite amazing. There are many causes of increased intracranial pressure, such as trauma, subarachnoid hemorrhage, ischemia, hypoxia, tumors, stroke, meningitis. All of these causes will lead to intracranial hypertension. What are the signs of intracranial hypertension other than Cushing reflex? You have reduced level of consciousness, papilledema, dilated poorly reactive pupils, decerebrate posturing, and palsy of the sixth cranial nerve. Okay, so now, anyways, we have an increased intracranial pressure. When the intracranial pressure exceeds the mean systemic arterial pressure, cerebral ischemia will occur, as you know, and this is decreased cerebral perfusion pressure. So stage one starts with cerebral ischemia. So the fight and flight mechanism will kick in because now your brain is not getting enough blood 
Danger, danger, it's time to go to work. Alpha-1 adrenergic receptor stimulation will lead to vasoconstriction of blood vessels in your body, leading to hypertension. This is the first sign of the triad called Cushing reflex. The sympathetic nervous system also will stimulate beta-1 receptors, leading to tachycardia. Oh wait, but you have just told me that Cushing reflex is a triad of hypertension, irregular breathing, and bradycardia. Why tachycardia now? Please calm down and wait. Good things happen to those who wait. Stage 2. We start with this hypertension. Stimulate the beta receptor in the aortic arch. Activation of parasympathetic. Through muscarinic receptors M2 in the heart leading to bradycardia. And this is the second sign of the triad called Cushing reflex. Also the parasympathetic will lead to Cushing ulcers in your stomach. Why? Because parasympathetic is rest and digest. When you digest, you increase the stomach acid through parietal cells activation, which will lead to some nasty ulcers in your stomach. Stage number three, let's start with hypertension. Hypertension, together with increased intracranial pressure, will press on the respiratory center on your brainstem. Brainstem has the respiratory center. This will lead to irregular breathing. So, and this is the third one of the triad called Cushing reflex. You have hypertension, bradycardia, irregular breathing. This is Cushing reflex. See, medicine is amazing. Everything just makes sense if explained properly. Now I have four questions for you. I'd like you to answer them in the comment section. So here's the first two. And here is the last two questions. The answers to these questions are on my Facebook page as well as my Twitter account. I'll see you in the next video. Be safe, stay happy, study hard.